Well, hello everyone, Dillian here. Happy Throwback Thursday, and the rotation leads us to a Bonacle review. And today's of which is on three of the Glatorians from 2009. And so on front of each canister, see the Bonacle logo in white, and the thorax ball above the eye, and the, the name of each set. And picture of the set that comes within, and interesting backgrounds with little hints of other things to them. And see Lego logo, Glatorian logo, the little warning and age recommendation, set number, amount of pieces. Uh, let me show off one is but the sign of which saying bonacle.com, which on Glatorian Legends ones it's on the other side of it. The logo that's right there. And also little slot to, uh, put your finger into and open it up easier, which they haven't done since the Inaika course. And if look on the back, oh, it's, then you see another picture of them, well, in them, and the corresponding Agori, and how I put them back in the canister, shoot the Thornax launcher, and the warning scanner code, and little indent of the uh, Bonacle action figure game and the bio codes, which interesting thing is that Gresh's in particular is the exact same as Malum's, but I think there's a reason for that, which I'll show in a minute, but also with these casters is that these little things down below is that, oh, it's for them, and these two things that are for the Katorian Legends ones as well, so they can stack quite easily. To of course store it away and to make it easy to ship them out and all. And yeah. And now onto the manuals. Let's see. Same picture as on fronts and everything. On the back, how to win on the online survey, but instead of Kongumari, it switched over to Pharaoh and Skirmix this time around, of course. And then I have Lego Club, and add for the two Titan sets from the time, and add for the Boris, and then a little promotional poster-like thing with those three little slogans of them. For victory, for glory, for power. And all the sets together on the hardwood floor team up. And also, Little instructions on how to play the action figure game. And, and and as you see, Gresh and Malum, well, that's probably why there's the same bio code, of course. And then introduction like thing for the game. Like how to set it up and all. And also the note is linked down below to, uh, for a little how-to tutorial on that. And the pieces that come with the set and final steps. So now, on to the sets. Starting out with the flagship character of the Glatorian line, Gresh. Which is still kind of cool to this day. And what's the one thing that people complain the most about him are the legs. They're just quite skinny. The, the same similar build as uh, Mystica Makuta Bittles, but instead of the new feet pieces, it's the Inaika feet, but in lime green color, of which great for mock making and all, but also great for mocking are four of the Bittal claw pieces in lime green, and also all the Rakshi limbs in dark green, like we've seen on Nidiki in 2004, of course. And that's for the chest plate. Which, which you may think is like Kongumari's, but 
doesn't have silver mixed into it and also her shoulder blades which kind of lock the will and the arms which do have the paraka armor in bright green or lime green of course but instructions say or say put them behind bunch but I prefer having it them like this because I think it looks kind of cool with that being shown but despite being in stuck in 90 degree angle of course and of course do have the hands which I mentioned in my Agori review and of course what the Glatorians, all the Glatorians have are the Thornax launchers and do attach a couple attach in different ways like Gretsch is a witch has it held like this yes but as you'll see on a couple other ones has the most efficient way but which are these two things that you can and the ball of which which most of it is soft rubber and the black bit surrounding it is plastic or solid plastic where you can put right on to there and basically you squeeze these together and fires so just about like the 2004 uh, disc launchers and they but they do also shoot a quite good distance and these weapons they kept on using until uh, a hero factory savage planet in 2011 at least till they kind of did enough form of it in or improved it a bit in a 2012 breakout and beyond and as i explained in my gory review last last throwback thursday is that they attach to different headpieces and attach from the top of course and gresh's a helmet here it was done quite nicely well with some good detailing in it mix of bright green and dark green but at least until it did get recolored to all light green in the 2010 stars version and fit on like so and all the as for the headpiece which was in a uh, lightish red although could have worked in blue which he does have blue eyes in the Legend Reborn movie, and of course the, the lower part of it is a mouth guard, which they some characters have in the Legend Reborn movie. Oh, also, if I detach it and that, and if you can notice, there is that first time in the Glatorian line, or the Glatorians were the first to introduce this neck piece which is kind of like the Glatorian or Tohradika headpieces but except are straight and not bent and have a, a pinhole connection instead of two axle connections oh, which so I guess so it was a good year and all and if you look from the back of them is that you see this Metru uh, chest piece and it's actually to hold the game dial thing where says these markings which and but they were always printed on you can turn it by saying by kind of hard to turn okay, four three two one and then skull dead although uh, I so what also common in this line with the scrawl and vorox often had it on their foot which mainly because they couldn't find a spot to put it on their backs but Someone did figure out a way to do that. Unless it's you mockers can also figure out how to do so. And anyways, back on to Gresh is that also introduced him is this large shield of which of these pieces. But there's a special thing with it. Can detach them. And you can put it underneath like that and and also there as well and it has double under blades or you can also uh, connect it right there and it has like a sword well 
as well, of course. So he's quite customizable. Which, so god, probably what makes Gresh one of my favorite Bonacle characters, of course. Well, enough talk of Gresh, of course. But next to which is Tarix. Which also good customizing mockable pieces like the Find and I could feed in bright blue. And also good return of some of the Metru limbs, of course. And do get uh, some Anika shoulder bl blades and uh, also leg armor in gold. Great for mocking. Although one says that it's somewhere, sort of the same places as Brutaka did. And also, odd thing to comment on is for the head neck connection piece is the instructions that would say put it in just a just one hole lower, but makes him look kind of awkward with it, but I think it's the best like that. And as you see, the helmet of which does look kind of a knight-like, or knights-like, and as you see, it does have a tube going into the uh, game dial thing, which I kind of don't understand. I think it would be much better if it were connected by a single axle pin onto one of those holes there. So then it won't have to worry about the two moving with the game piece. Also the Tarix do have these uh, uh, tail pieces acting as shoulder spikes. Since at that time Bongo was getting kind of excessive with spikes. Uh, so just like Barracks has the hand pieces in blue and also, do get these uh, new cool blade pieces, which Mott Nui introduced him to in Legend Reborn. But he had just one of it, that, but on the actual set, you do get two of it. But whereas the blue part, some say is like a thin tissue paper plastic, so might want to be very careful with it. Whereas one of which does have another one of those newer neck pieces, and has a hand connector to it to hold his Thornax launch on it, of which, good use of that. And that is it with Tarix. And lastly is Strack. And he which built kind of more unique than the other ones, than the other two, of course. Okay. And so, yeah. And just like Tarix had our, a whole lot of the Metru limbs going on, and, and of course the hand pieces in white, and also large improvement over Liwa Mata's axe is his uh, axe piece, but as you see, it's mixed of bright blue and white, which a couple other pieces on him as well is. And just like Tarix had is a Nike shoulder blade piece, but as a chest plate. And what he was a little unique that about how his torso is put in a 90 degree angle. Well, since he's probably a hunched character in the universe. And his uh, game dials kind of put the opposite way, which although I think the Squirrels also could have done been like that, but whatever. And just like what uh, Tuma and Vorox have are a uh, metro limb act for a neck. And his helmet, of which does have a couple teeth on it, of course. And of course, in the Legendary Board movie, he also is still there, of course. And as for these uh, uh, shoulder blade pieces, which look like ice is frozen around him, just like the helmet is, and the uh, top blue part are, is this flexible rubber material, but 
the rest of what him is in, like the mask and axe, same deal, but not rubbery. But still, these uh, shoulder blade pieces, great for mocking, give a good icicle effect. Since his color scheme is light blue, dark blue, and mostly white. Even though Gelu in the Legends line also had that, but just more dark blue, but not at all any light blue, of course. And so now, on to the final part. Well, overall, these, I think, are pretty cool sets for the time of 2009. Like, plenty of good mocking pieces, and also quite colorful of that, like Tarx and his gold, and Strack with his ice blades, and Gresh with his uh, green spiky parts, of course. And, of course, at this time they were introduced to a game that, to the figure game, which you like take turns uh, shooting with these characters and all oh, which a little good change up from previous years of course would and of course stuck around to the legends and the vehicle sets later this year of course there's and of course and also that Tarx and Strack were of course voiced by the same uh, voice actor in the Legendary Born movie of course and yeah And so if you still have these sets from back in the day, well, if you had some good memories of them. And for those of you who haven't and still have access to these sets, I'd say truly go ahead and pick them up. eBay, BrickLink, whatever. And that's about it with this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.